Live from New York City, it's The Cube at Big Data NYC 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, WAN Disco, with support from EMC, MarkLogic, and Teradata. With hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. Welcome back to Big Data NYC, we're in the Big Apple. <clears throat> My good friend and the friend of theCUBE, Rich Napolitano is here. Rich, it's great to see you. Yeah, good morning. So, good first of all, uh, congratulations on just a phenomenal career at EMC. Uh, Thanks, you Dave. recently left the company uh, after, I mean, <laughs> it was a lot, of, uh, a lot of years there and some great work and Thank I'm you. sure you got the scars too. <laughs> you, know, you went out and, and really did some just unbelievable um, work in the field uh, with the products, uh, particularly, I, I personally watched what you did with VNX. I mean, you took that thing and you, you and your team, I mean, obviously you got a lot yeah. of great people. And uh, a lot of people called for the death of that, you know? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you really just created uh, an amazing platform. So congratulations on uh, all that. And how do you feel? No, no, it, it's great. It was a great experience. Uh, uh, EMC is certainly uh, the best company I ever worked for that I didn't run personally. <laughs> so there's no question. I mean, Joe Tucci, uh, great leader. I've been very fortunate to have some great mentors uh, in the industry over 30 years, and Tucci's the top of the list. Uh, he's done a remarkable uh, job in that company. You know, the senior staff, David, Pat, uh, Paul Moretz, you know, my team, my peers, a great company, great culture. Yeah. You know, fundamentally understand two things. It's all about the customer, and it's all about the product. And if you get those two things right, you're doing pretty well. So, uh, great experience, and uh, you know, some sadness, because uh, I love a lot of people, but you know, and you know that's my background, I've done a lot of startups, and it's time for me to go back into that world, so that's where we're going to go. So you're looking for the next big thing. Next you know? big thing. I yeah. don't know how much you can say about this, but uh, you know, there's a lot of people trying to break EMC up and take VMware. It seems to me that EMC always did a great job of leveraging uh, VMware and, and, and driving value for customers. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what can you say about that? Do you have any initial thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, you know, it's hard to really comment. Uh, obviously, I, a lot of inside baseball, and you know, I, I will say just this, right? Um, Never underestimate Joe Tucci, uh, just never underestimate him. He sees the industry uh, unlike very few people in the world. And so, you know, the opportunity in the marketplace as we transition into this new world, you know, with the assets that EMC has to offer a tremendous value proposition in the marketplace, EMC is very well positioned, whether it be with Pivotal, uh, VMware, you know, the existing storage business, the security businesses, there's huge value in bringing these together to solve the most complicated problems in the marketplace. And, um, you know, I'm totally confident in that team to really figure it out and continue to uh, grow and you know develop in the marketplace, especially as we transition into this new era. Yeah, he's such a unique, unique animal in this business. I mean, really came out of a, a sales. I know he had a technical background, kind of. It was like a programmer, like everybody was back in the day. Uh, and then when he came from from Wang, there was a lot of skepticism. He's following Mike Rutgers, right? He was did some amazing things, you know, through the dot com boom. And Tucci's just taking it to to new levels. I mean. I would say the greatest CEO EMC ever had and the CEO of the decade. I mean, it's hard to argue, right? No, it's hard to argue. I mean, Joe, Joe is certainly unique, but you know, he develops and engenders you know, tremendous camaraderie in the team. I, I stayed at EMC as long as I did because of Joe. Yeah, so, uh, so a lot of us are really wired that way and it's a great culture and it'll, and it'll continue on. It's a, it's a very solid base to uh, continue to build from. But from my perspective, startups are, are for me now. So it's back so, into that world. So let's yeah. get into it. I mean, it's cool to see yeah. you down here at Hadoop World. You know, I think this is, is this your first time at this show? Yeah, or? it's my first time at Hadoop World. Yes, it is. What are your impressions? Uh, I'm hugely excited. I, I came here to really understand. I've been, you know, the last uh, six months or so, just stepping back and thinking, reading a lot, uh, you know, research papers, uh, The Economist, uh, talking to, you know, 25 or, or more startups, venture firms, private equity, to really you know, step back and think about what's happening. And uh, I got a lot of validation just walking around the floor and talking to people. Uh, I've been talking to custo you know, potential customers of you know, future technologies, et cetera, even here in, in uh, you know, my last six months. And there's tremendous validation about something very, very important and profound, which is uh, the new applications in this next platform era, and we're all kind of familiar with you know, platform one, platform two kind of jargon. And as we move forward, I see this transformation really being driven by two fundamental changes. The change of the nature of applications, they're scaling out, and the change of the nature of kind of this new data repositories. And those two things are going to represent you know, tremendous opportunities in the, in the future. 
So the validation here was you look at this community that's so uh, passionate about you know, Hadoop and uh, the, the various abstractions on top of that, and what's happening there in terms of the potential for you know, solving much more complex problems uh, with these new technologies is a major uh, transition point for the marketplace and an opportunity to build some great companies. So, in, in, I'm sure in your observations and your reading and talking to people, you've seen how complicated this is for customers. Um, can, you, can you talk about that a little bit in terms of just the things that you've observed? Because you come from a world where essentially you're trying to take complexity uh, out of the situation, put it into a box, let people spend money to, to save time because they don't have that time. Um, and this world needs that kind of help. W sure. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think, you know, um, you know I've been talking to a lot of uh, people I know in the industry and uh, some of my mentors over the years, et cetera. And we're in a unique moment because if you think about the four fundamental building blocks of IT is you know, applications, compute, network, and storage. You know, we've had a certain architecture associated with that. You know, in, in platform one, it was very monolithic. They were tightly coupled, and companies of that era, like digital, where I started my career, they built everything and they sold it to you direct, and it was all monolithic. Um, in the era that we're living in now, we kind of went into a best of breed kind of model where you know, the applications became independent from the comp compute, uh, compute became independent from the network, and network became independent from the storage, and we've lived in these horizontals, and there was a lot of system integration that occurred to create a value proposition um, you know, for the customer. And now we're facing a time where all of those swim lanes between these architectural building blocks are now blurring. So what is compute? What is the application? What is the network? What is the application? What is storage? What is compute? All of these boundaries between these fundamental building blocks are all shifting around. And it's kind of fascinating, right? Because if you think about a storage subsystem, a lot of the resiliency things now are shifting up into the application. It's very interesting. If you look at NYSERA, NYSERA would say they are a network. Mm. So you know, all of these architectural boundaries are shifting around, and uh, so that that represents. And so why is that? Because when you look at the use cases of you know big data applications or mobile or uh, social media, et cetera, if you look at how these applications are being written, this horizontal scaling that's been validated here at the show, why is that? Because what people, I think, have realized is that the agility associated with these new architectures allows them to deploy much more rapidly, much more cost-effectively, um, enable geographic distribution, enable scaling, enable easy scaling, uh, uh, and allow you to more programmatically control your infrastructure based on policy and other things. It's a very rich time in the, in the industry. And so the system companies like an EMC, to get back to your original point, you know, have that skill set of being able to assemble these things into a solution orientation, which is why fundamentally I think you know, EMC and a lot of these other system companies at the time um, you know, have a big value proposition to the future. Even though those boundaries are shifting, the people that understand how to make these very complicated systems consumable to the masses, that's a big value proposition, whether 25, 30 years ago, or you know, five years from now. So historically, infrastructure has to be resilient. Uh, it's, it's, it's got all kinds of function in it, particularly related around recovery. Mm -hmm. And, and your, if I infer your comments, a lot of that's going into the application or into some software layer above the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So what, how are the requirements, in your view, of infrastructure changing, and what, is, what are going to be some of the critical success factors for mm -hmm. winning in infrastructure? Going sure, on? I mean, this is a great question, and this is uh, the essence of what I've been studying. Um, you know, I started thinking about things like converged infrastructure several years ago uh, uh, when I was working at EMC because I wanted to understand the implications of these technology transitions on my business. Obviously, I ran about a third of the storage business, and so understanding these trends was very important for us to continue to grow you know, VNX and other parts of the business, which uh, you know, as all publicly disclosed are doing quite well. Um, but, so what are the requirements in the future? The requirements are coming from these applications. So the, the real answer to all of these questions, I believe in the future of the infrastructure actually come from the applications. And so their requirements on scale is, is, uh, is fundamental, right? You look at the difference between uh, the rapidity of growth of you name the application uh, even video games have this property. You know, more and more subscribers. When a bank puts up a service, they, they can't predict how many people are actually going to use that service. So they need tremendous agility. Um, if you look at things like Hadoop, the nature of Hadoop is that you're, you're sharding out your processing across all of these processor complex. Well, that fundamentally changes the nature of the communication in the data center from north-south, 
I, I compute on this you know, vertically scaled infrastructure and I give you the answer to your client to I am sharding out these requests across all these processor complexes and my, my traffic suddenly explodes east-west by orders and orders of magnitude, ships from north-south to east-west by orders and orders of magnitude. If you look at these applications, suddenly network congestion is a big deal because I have all these different flavors of traffic running over the same kind of network and the network hasn't changed in 20 years. So does it really meet the requirements of the future? How do you scale these applications if you get you know, thousands of users to sign up for them? How do you scale them easily? How do you deploy more, uh, more readily in your infrastructure when you have data centers spoon all over the place? Um, there is not anybody that doesn't want to talk about cloud and, or how do I geographically distribute my data across geographic areas. So how do we make the experience of deployment, geographic distribution, um, you know, one of the interesting things I, I, I learned more about here is this notion of the enterprise data hub. And, you know, so imagine if you have this centralized repository where many different kinds of applications are, are manipulating these data sets and your applications are, you know, composite applications from other applications, but you need to share this resource. Well, the moment you share it, you also have security concerns, right? The moment that you share it, if you have your data depository here in Manhattan, you may want to share it within a data center, right? But you also may want to have DR, say, across the river in New Jersey, or in Brooklyn, or in Queens. And so, you know, you want to have agility in terms of your physical location. You might want to have some of it, you know, in-house, you know, you know uh, internal cloud, or external cloud. So how do you build these notions into these modern architectures that were kind of bolt-ons to the existing platform architectures? So, wow, I mean, a lot of things that you're sort of triggered in my brain, mobile, really is, is pushing, the, yes. is, is forcing that network That's to right. get flatter, but networks aren't flat today. They're really hierarchical and, and, and rigid. And then that, that concept that you laid forth about these swim lanes, I'm, I'm envisioning data actually being one of those horizontal transports That's right. That's right. that people can take advantage of. So people don't want to necessarily muck around with the infrastructure like they used to, right? right? They want that to be sort of a, a converged, a consolidated, simple, give me an infrastructure as a service. I don't That's have right. to worry about all that complexity. Correct. And then let me put, some leverage around Correct. data Correct. And, and then build applications Correct. on top of that. That share that data. And, which and, is and new, new business models. It's critical. You mentioned yeah, the, the ability to share data, and we talked about this earlier, is the value of your data goes up as you reuse it. Correct. And using it th throughout multiple applications, different uses, and being able to rapidly spin up new applications when you've got a, a, you know, a new idea, a new hypothesis. Um, and that's, to me, one of the really big challenges here is actually that being able to rapidly do that in a way that makes um, that's easy for the user to Correct. get these insights. Correct. I, I totally agree. When you look at the traditional, um, so we, we all grew up, <laughs> I'm older than most guys, but uh, you know, I grew up in the mini computer era. Uh, I did work on some mainframes when I was in college. Um, but the vertically scaled notion that we've been living in in terms of you know, this you know, first very monolithic and then kind of best of breed architectures and client server era, we're really vertically scaled. Mm -hmm. and um, so, you know, again, the indications for where I think the future lies in infrastructure is not actually not in the infrastructure, it's actually in the applications. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why do people, why are people writing, especially in, in this metropolitan area, I, I spend a lot of time with uh, uh, people that I've known, obviously I grew up here uh, a long time ago, um, uh, spending time with people that I've known, everybody's rewriting their applications to be horizontally scaled. And so, why is that? It's for all the same reasons we just talked about. It's the agility associated with deployment, it's the ease of use, it's the modularity, uh, it's the ability to partition the data set to isolate these things. So there's, you know, so how, how do you build an agile infrastructure to enable these applications in the new era? Mm -hmm. Which is frankly my focus now. Which so is, what does the infrastructure need to look like to enable these requirements of these applications? So, so what, what's le leading these days? I mean, it's, it's always been an age-old discussion. Uh, John Furrier and I have it all the time. Is it, what's the, what's the gate? Is it the application slowing the infrastructure down? Is the infrastructure slowing the application down? What would you, where, where are we at today? Uh, I see, this is what I love about this. Uh, um, in reality, I've been doing the same thing for over 30 years. Uh, <laughs> So I, I, when I wake up in the morning, uh, before I look in the mirror, I think of myself as an operating system software guy. Because I started my career at DEC over 30 years ago uh, in, in New Hampshire, in Nashville, New Hampshire, uh, in the VMS operating system group. And so these are systems, yeah. to get to the point, right? These are complicated systems, and there are hardware and software components. There are applications, there are, there are you know, physical, virtual operating systems, um, and it's really, at the end of, end of the day, a system. So the trick is to really understand the system. And, uh, 
And then, if you approach this from the top down, because I see a lot of companies approaching this from the bottom up, not to pick it on any, in, any industry, but how many more flash startups do we need? Uh, I, I, I know a lot about flash. I probably <laughs> saw more flash than anybody you know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> And I know more about how Flash fails than probably anybody you know. <laughs> uh, and we got really good at making sure we protected people from it. But, um, you know, that's such a bottom-up orientation. That's not, that's not how you're going to solve these problems. These are system-level problems. So once you understand the applications, then you can, you can understand then what the essence of the infrastructure. How do you shape the infrastructure for the future to meet the requirements of these new age applications? I yeah, I, 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 I want to go down a tangent with you and just get your, your opinion because I, I tend to agree with you. I mean, I can see, I mean, Flash, I'm very excited about Flash, of course. I mean, of how course. can you not be excited about Flash as somebody who's followed the storage industry for a long time? But you can see that getting not that interesting down the road. And, you know, David Scott said this to me. He said, you know what? I don't see the Flash guys, uh, all these startups are getting escape velocity the way that the <coughs> virtualization guys were able to because we got lucky, he said, about 3PAR. He said, we just happened to raise a ton of dough before mm. the market crashed. <laughs> you know? He was well, yeah, he was well <laughs> positioned. And, and obviously, you know, he's you know, sharp guys and they did a good job, but do you remember how much they struggled yeah. you know, before they got bought out yeah. by HP? And so, and he's saying, he's, he thinks the flash guys are, are not going to be able to get that. He used that term escape velocity it, be, because EMC's got a solution, HP's got a solution, and Oracle's going to have their, their deal. But what do you think about that? I think it's actually a good thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of research on this. Um, uh, uh, there's a lot of research on this. And uh, um, you, you need, in a, in a, especially in a period of this, you need, I think, excess investment. Um, you need excess investment. We, we don't fund government research and things like we used to. Yeah. Um, so it's got to come from industry somehow. And so excess investment actually ensures success because any one success is so compelling that, and how do you get there, right? It's a somewhere, well, not just a probability game, but you need to have excess investment in an area to be sure you've covered all the cases so you can really discover all you need to discover. So, so it's really you know, leveraging venture, and at the end of the day, there'll be a few successes, and that's all you need to really kind of get us to the next level. Yeah, okay. So some excess investment is actually a good thing. And that's you could good. argue, is it too much? I, I don't know. Uh, so some ex ex excess investment is, is a healthy and good Let thing it shake out, and a couple, if a couple guys emerge as leaders, great, then it'll take us to the next the step. The beauty of the American economy. And, and, right? and, and the stuff. Silicon Valley economy. So I wanted right. to talk about that a little bit. I mean, it's a vortex that you can't compete with, but you know, we're here in New York, and New York's got some good VC juice going, we live in Boston, and mm -hmm. you know, they've always had, you know, it's very strong, obviously, you know, uh, 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 health, health, I mean, bio, uh, and, and, and you know, pharma, uh, uh, but the tech business there, it's, uh, you know, in your old neck of the woods up in New Hampshire, there's, a, there's, some, there's some things coming back. Uh, what's your take on, on the whole VC, you know, world? I'm talking well, a lot of folks lately. Yeah, I mean, well, the good news is that we're not capital constrained, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, what I look for are, you know, are there customers <laughs> uh, and are there engineers? <laughs> because it comes back to the two things we talked about earlier, which is, you know, there's, there's truth in two places, right, in, in a company, in a technology company, in front of the customer and in the engineering lab. Mm -hmm. But that's where there's truth. Everything else is some of the form of information. <laughs> and so, you know, if you have great engineers, and we have tremendous system-oriented engineers in the East Coast, yeah, just tremendous. Right. You know, you look at that DNA pool, it's a very, very rich DNA pool. Um, the challenge has been actually the East Coast guys tend to sell out. Right. That's, that's the challenge, and so they sell out to West Coast companies and because there's a bigger go-to-market or whatever. Uh, but that's, that's, the, that's the pattern over the years. So the talent's here. Uh, for my Sun days, when, when I analyzed the market in the US, when I ran US sales for Sun, back in the heyday when we were growing, um, 70% of the revenue is east of the Mississippi. So why shouldn't you be able to build great companies in the East Coast? You should. Well, that's and why I'm so excited you that you actually popped out of EMC and are doing a, you know, looking around for your next big, big thing. But EMC sucked up a lot of talent. And a lot of that that's right. talent. That's true, that's true, <laughs> but there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Uh, I mean, you, know, you look at the, the telco, you look at the old operating system groups, you look at uh, the software companies that are there. There are companies that are moving from the West Coast to the East Coast now. Well, right, because so it's Google, too expensive to Google, get talent. Google, Amazon, um, uh, rumor has it Arista is mm -hmm. going to move to the East Coast. So, you know, we see this migration because there's talent here. We have tremendous universities uh, in the East Coast and we have a lot of customers. So those are the two fundamental ingredients. So when, in thinking about your, your next big thing, 
What are the sort of characteristics of that next big thing that you're after? Maybe you could describe Yeah, that so I think, um, you know, what I'm thinking about is, you know, you, you look at how people want to use IT in the future, and, I, and I'm kind of in these, loose, these three loose buckets. Um, I think about cloud and distributed data centers as just being how people will think about infrastructure, whether it's on-prem or off-prem. So kind of cloud and distributed data centers is just, just one vector of the future, you know, platform three orientation. The next is this, this idea that, again, again, I came here to try to validate, and I think we have validated, is the, you know, the horizontal scaling of these applications, whether it be big data apps like Hadoop, or just you know, multi-tenant applications where you have a lot of applications, or virtualized environments where you have a lot of VMs. They really all have the same property, which is they're scaling horizontally, and they're sharing common resources. Um, so you have <clears throat> cloud, distributed data center, horizontally scaled applications, big data, and then you have just these requirements to build an infrastructure that's just more agile. You know, um, you know I, I, think about, um, I think about these kind of vertically scaled infrastructures, um, and, I, and I think often I'll, I'll look outside, see these, these are things I have time to ponder now, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I, 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 I spent 30 years in New Hampshire, and, and so I've seen a lot of trees and forests, and, and I think, you know, if you look at a tree, it's very interesting, right? Um, tree has all these leaves and branches, and you have these leaves, and it has this trunk. And the beautiful thing about a tree is that, you know, every year it grows a new ring. And why is that? Because every year it has more branches and leaves. And it's totally in proportion. And when you're growing at the rate of a tree, you can have a vertically scaled architecture. <laughs> but in this new world, <laughs> you just can't have that architecture. It's too rigid. If I'm growing one ring a year, that's fine. But if I'm doubling my, my number of customers on mobile, on big data, et cetera. I need a different architecture, and that's what I'm thinking uh, about. Rich. Well, you're a world-class exec. You can see the forest through the trees. I'm really excited <laughs> to, to watch your, your, you know, the next phase of your career. So thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It's really pleasure. a pleasure having you. Yeah, good to see you. All right, good to see you. Take care. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is Big Data NYC. This is theCUBE, right back. Thanks a lot. That was